So you, you mentioned the security part because mm -hmm. I, I noticed that, that Zoom is, is doing some upgrades or new stuff. What, what's going on with the security and, and how is that connected with the increased volume that's yeah. through Corona? So, so, so a, lot of it, a lot of it was exposed with the Zoom bombing or the meeting disruption um, when it went into the consumer model. And then even when it went into the education um, segment or that vertical. Um, for higher education, and you had students that were out, out there advertising their meeting IDs, so their classrooms would be disrupted, so they didn't have to attend those classrooms. Um, so there was malicious intent there, um, and then you just had natural abuse that was happening as well. Um, so meeting those requirements to patch that also had, we had an opportunity to, to increase our levels of encryption, because then we had large enterprises that had concerns over so I'm talking to you, Dr. Joe, is this talk path encrypted? If we're recording right now, when that gets recorded and stored, is that encrypted? What is that level of encryption? Is there opportunity for a hacker or an insider to come in and decrypt that message and take that con content and deliver it somewhere else? So that was our big announcement that we announced on May 30th was AES-256 GCM, which is one of the highest levels of encryption um, from a from a perspective of that container, that transit, there's no penetration. This is this is encryption levels that are, are used in the DOD, encryption levels that are used in, in the government sector. Um, so that was our big step to really secure this content in transit and at rest. And then with that came, you know, creating these from a frictionless experience where you click the button, you join. Now you click the button, you go into a waiting room, or you have to enter a password, or you have to be approved by the admin, or you have to register. So we've tried to create these safety barriers um, for entry. And you know that, that's part of that whole security story. But really it came down to you know bringing on staff or bringing on consultants in the cryptology space that provided guidance, even through acquisition of a company called Keybase, brought them in to tighten the belt and put the suspenders on this thing to say we can't we can't be exposed and and then the acceleration so there was a 90-day plan that was put in place in march we're in day 64 right now and by the end of this by the end of june that 90-day plan will be fully executed um and that encompasses the encryption and encompasses all the settings within the client it encompasses the disruption it, it's a, it's a wide lens of of the 90-day plan um around attestation around you know what are we doing legally with these other entities and how do we how you know, what's our transparency reports look like so a lot of that stuff is is in that 90-day plan so it's really interesting wow. can we back up just a little bit because i've heard this word encryption but i i'm not a a computer guy really um what does that what does that really mean encryption so it, it, it's, it's like if I, if I send you uh, five apples over a fence and you collect each apple one at a time, it's pretty easy to see that trail. But if I send you five apples and you collect the third apple and then the fourth apple falls over here three seconds later and then the first apple comes back in and then the fifth apple and they're out of order and they're this is probably the easiest analogy, but there, there's an encryption method that happened there to where if I'm, if I'm intercepting these while they're coming over the fence, I'm not grabbing them in any particular order. I don't know how they were sent, what was the original intent, and what's the original uh -huh. distribution, and how am I supposed to consume this? So what it is is there's, there's a key that's generated from me throwing the apples over. You have the other key. You catch them in that, in that series. So that's, that's how we encrypt. Right. So if there's somebody in the middle, he doesn't have a key. He doesn't know what the order of those packets were. He doesn't know how to reassemble them. He doesn't know the content. So yeah. that's probably easy to explain. And, and the, the implication there is that the message that is being transmitted from one place to another, for some instances, needs to be secure. Uh, and so that somebody, you know, I, I mean, I, I, the analogy I use is, you know, in, in, in my practice in psychiatry, Somebody wants to know that they can share something with me as a secret and nobody else will know it. So is that a, a reasonable sort of analogy? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So 
we're protecting PHI, we're protecting PII information. Um, in, in the FedRAMP space, we're protecting any kind of government sensitive, sensitive information. Um, in the financial sp space, we're protecting that content as well. So for the day traders, for the stockbrokers, for the, for the NASDAQs of the world, their communication is highly sensitive. Um, in the healthcare space, with HIPAA compliancy, your content and your data is highly sensitive. So we want to ensure that what we do, what we provide as a platform is able to be compliant for one, but also be able to deliver the message um, to the far end and as a doctor, patient, or client. Stretch the canvas, brush with madness. Is it sadness or just a show that